Hello and welcome. Why is my avatar not showing? There she is. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the library. My name is Sard and I am your host and narrator for this evening. Well, we are at it again today for another episode of uh, The Wife is First. Um, <laughs> I've been toying a bit, debating with myself whether or not to, um, to advertise where I'm getting my stories from, because I was told by one of the other narrators that I greatly respect and admire, they do fantastic work, um, but I was informed by them that because certain English translations aren't licensed, naturally, that they didn't necessarily want the attention drawn to them because what they were doing wasn't technically above board, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, so, so I like I I'd love to give links and all that to where I'm getting my stories from. Uh, there's a third story that's just been recommended to me. It has fish in the title, so you know I'm interested. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, but um, uh, the translators over on this site are some of the absolute best that I've seen. And so this site is my go-to for all of my Don May. And uh, I'd love, love to be able to, you know, tell everyone where I'm getting my stuff from. But it doesn't seem like it's necessarily the best idea. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. So just one moment while I get the rest of my stuff up and going, which I should have been doing earlier, but I was tinkering. Again, I'm trying my best to get the new computer all set up and working as it should. And it's, it's just the task of finding the time, quite frankly. So, um, bum, 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 bum. let's see, I want to do this without... You guys hearing what I'm doing? There's so many chords. This my entire area is complete disaster right now. And let me do this. And I'll mute that. And yeah, that should do it. Let me do 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 do. Oh, it straight up won't let me. Okay. Well, that's fair, I guess. Uh, no, you know what? It's not. Hold with me. Bear with me. I always try to give myself at least 15 minutes, if not a little more, before we actually get into the story. So I'm trying, trying to find my thing. Where is it? Is it this? It could be this. <laughs> Really hoping I muted everything. Okay, yes, this is basically what I was looking for. Now I'm looking for this. I want this, and I want this, because I want all this info. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. This is what I'm looking for. Copy this, move this over. So as I mentioned in yesterday's video, it seems so weird to say that it's yesterday's, but yesterday's video, I um, mentioned that I will be putting out all of these episodes onto a podcast and it'll be the library podcast edition because I think that's cute. Um, that'll be going up at some point. I really, oh, sorry, I can't <laughs> tell you exactly when because I'm not 100% sure. Um... I'm hoping to get it up soon. Start. I actually want to start getting up this weekend. But as to what the actual um, update dates will look like, I'm not sure when I will put them up. I just know that I'll have them uh, do, 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 to be a week, a weekly or twice a week thing until we get caught. Probably twice a week thing, actually, until we get caught up. That would make more sense. It is a lot more work, but I'm here for it. 
Oops, 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 don't press the wrong buttons. So what I'm currently doing right now, which you cannot see, is I am just... Nah, let's not do that. I will do this, though. Bam. Oh, snap. It gets it all done. Oh, I should do this. Just as... <gasps> That's a great idea. Oh, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and I want to get started. So let's not do that. Let's not and say we did. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let's go live. That's, yes, that's, okay. That's everything that's already done on there. Okay. Good enough. What's that saying? Good enough for government work? Hmm. All righty. All right, all right, all right. Go to page. My channel. And the last thing. Come on, you. And we're still muted. Okay, good. So I know that was thrilling, but I'm done. So we're going to go over to start getting started. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. I was thinking about it earlier. Is, you know when you're sitting there and you're at work and you're just like, ugh. And then you go, I'd, be, I'd rather be reading. like, And then I realized, oh, wait, I will be. <laughs> That's why it's fun. It's a nice little... Oh, this isn't too big for the page, is it? Whoa! Don't go anywhere. Let me just move this over. No, that's okay. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so... Just to recap... Uh... We're going on to chapter five of The Wife is First. And for some reason, Muhan Jiang has just offered or asked, only beg your highness to reward me with, I your, so this is Muhan Jiang, Muhan Jiang saying to Jing, Jing Xiao, I, your servant, am now aware. I will not request anything else from your highness. Only beg your highness to reward me with divorce papers once you have obtained recognition and success. So, what he's saying, if I've re read this right, if I read it this right, if I read this right, <laughs> is that, because we learned in the first chapter, when they're doing the flashback before they've mm, come into this world, we know that, oh, excuse me, oh. that Muhan Jang feels guilty and responsible for the Empress conniving so that Jing Xiao can never inherit the throne. And he feels guilty for his part in that, even though he is n in no way, way responsible. He was never a party to it. He was just kind of chosen. Um for Ling Ling Xiao by sorry for Jing Xiao by the Empress and the Empress is remember not his actual mother he's from the first marriage again this is a lot of there's some similarities here to Mary Thrice to Salt the Fish and so we know from the beginning that Mu Han Jiang is feels very guilty for the part that he played in that even though it was not his choice at all and so now he's saying to Jing Xiao you know even though you know, Jing Xiao has treated him really well by this point and is, in fact, quite clingy and soppy. <laughs> um, sorry, just gonna adjust my light here. Oh, that's better. Um, he's saying, you know, once you... Once you've earned your rep, um, a higher reputation and your recognition and you've earned your the successes that would, without me here have gained you notori enough notoriety to be a, a contender for the crown prince, for the emperor. Um, you know, just serve me with divorce papers and I'll go on my merry way. So he's not saying this I, from wh the way I'm reading it. He's not saying this out of fear or anger or spite. He's saying, I will step aside without any kind of backlash or without any grudge for because I know that this was your um your goal and what you were striving for. So I will step aside and I will not stand in your way. And Jing Xiao is I don't think going to take this very well. <laughs> okay. One more yawn. 
because that's all I'm allowing myself. And then we will get started. Okay. And how long? Ooh, 15 minutes on the dot. Well done. Chapter 15. Fever. Look around and nobody notices. Steal a kiss on the cheek. Divorce? Jing Xiao was stunned. After recovering from the shock, he sneered. You're a man. Divorcing you doesn't really affect your reputation. Nevertheless, as a divorced man, you will not be allowed to pass the entrance examination. Even if I let you go, in this lifetime you are destined to miss the imperial examination. So he did not handle that well. <laughs> then what do you want? Mu Han Jiang sat up and looked at him coldly. If this person wanted to keep him here to be tormented, he would definitely not endure this abuse. I can't inherit the throne, and you can participate in the civil examinations. Therefore, we are even. Jing Xiao said with a slightly self-righteous magnetic voice. Huh? <laughs> Mu Han Jiang was stunned for a long time. In the originally cold in the originally cold face of Jing <laughs> The originally cold face of Jing Jun Qing appeared to crack. Quite a silly expression, his half his mouth half open. It felt as if he had been choked and then thrown into the air only to land on a soft cushion in the end. Jing Xiao saw his stupefied expression and thought it was funny. He wanted to try reaching out to poke it. But a voice but a voice from the outside called Your Highness, his medicine's his highness's medicine is ready. Jing Xiao frowned and allowed Meng Why am I tripping over this so much today? Jing Xiao frowned and allowed Meng Xi to bring in the medicine. Mu Han Jiang resigned reined in his expression and lowered his head, not saying a thing. Meng Xing, sorry, that was supposed to be a female voice. Meng Xing, Xing took a quick glimpse of, of, of his, ah. Meng Xing took a quick glance of his complexion, smiled and walked over to the bedside. Your Highness, please allow this servant to serve His Highness the medicine. Meng Xi carried the medicine, embarrassedly looking over at the bedside where Jing Xiao was motionless. Jing Xiao took the medicine bowl and moved his hand to signal Meng Xi to retreat, turning his face towards the door. Zhou Fu! Here! Zhou Fu smiled and revealed his head through the small space between the doors. Guard, the outsi Guard outside the door. Jing Xiao saw his appearance and thought it was somewhat funny. Zhou Fu was already this age, but still behaved like a child. Yes. Dofu naturally understood what the prince meant. He dismissed the rest of the ser servants to go do other work and ordered for guards to stand at each corner of the residence while he himself guarded in front of the door, basking in sunlight and smiling, making sure that no one could lean against the walls and hear what his highnesses were saying. Are you confused? Because I'm a little confused. And I've read this before, but I'm still confused. <sighs> you didn't listen to everything I had to say. Jing Xiao held the medicine in his palm and stirred it. Those are words said by outsiders. My abilities. I know them well. Even if I marry the Queen Mother of the West, I would not be able to sit on that position. Your Highness, why do you say such a thing? Muhan Jiang licked his lips, listening to Jing Xiao speak in this tone so openly, his expression didn't seem to be faked. Could he really have doubted that person wrongly? Jing Xiao handed the medicine bowl to him. I entered the military camp at age 14 and have been on the battlefield for so many years now. I have gone through many challenging experiences, 
and have become well versed in the art of warfare. But I know nothing of governing a country. Look at me. I cannot even draw an imperial physician to my side. Even this is already difficult. How am I to compete with, for the throne? Muhan Jiang took the bowl of medicine that was in front of him. So, it turns out that he was bribing the imperial physician in front of him, just for the sake of showing him an example. Although I understand it myself, who can say this? Take today's meeting, for example. If I had helped you while you were in... The while we were in the palace, Imperial Father would have thought that although I appeared innocent on the surface, I am full of schemes. It would have caused even more trouble later. After saying this, Jing Xiao could not help but sigh. If he had not been so outrightly defiant, Imperial Father wouldn't have had to restrain him like this. Mu Han Ji held the bowl of pitch black medicine and downed it in one gulp only tasting the bitterness of it at the root of his tongue. So, it turns out that even the princes and the imperial grandsons had their own difficulties. Just as soon as he finished putting down the bowl of medicine, a candied fruit was stuffed into his mouth. Mu Han Jiang raised his head to see, just barely catching that person's smile as that person wiped away the dregs of medicine at the corners of his mouth. Jing Xiao was born beautiful, and had extru- and had e <laughs> Jing Xiao was born beautiful, and had extraordinary looks. It was only that he normally did not like to smile. Now, seeing it like this, he was especially good-looking. He had heard that he had heard that Chen Wang was irritable, easily angered, and taciturn. But since last night, from the beginning, this person had smiled at him many times. Mu Han Jiang gave a light sigh. Maybe he should trust him. After all, he was genuine and had nothing to conspire. If your highness wishes to win over Jiang Te... Taiyi, it is not completely impossible, Mu Hanjang said while eating the candied fruit. Oh? Jing Xiao looked at him with interest. Mu Hanjang felt tired, and without asking, leaned into the big pillow on the bed. Simply have Jiang Taiyi's son enlist in one of the troops under your highness's command, and then plan for him to be making and then plan for him to make a big or small mistake. The old fellow will certainly come to beg your highness. Jun Qing. Jing Xiao looked at him with pleasant surprise. He wasn't very familiar with the connections of those in the imperial physician courtyard. Calling on Jiang Huan had only been because he was well known for being slippery and private. Today, he was given such an advantage from now on, he would remember to yield to Jun, Jun Qing and take care of him. If he had such an ability, he would be able to draw anyone over to his side. This was certainly an unexpected joy. Jing Xiao abruptly threw himself onto Jun Qing for a hug. You really, you really are a military strategist. Like this, I can gain followers without having to spend much effort. Mu Han Zhang scheming for him, allowing him to explain himself, meant that he had already accepted him. So I just, I want to point out, before we go farther, please note that this story is not at all like Married Thrice to Salted Fish, because both of the main characters in this are quite sticky. <laughs> like they're they're quite together. There's no doubts, I guess you could say. There's no hiding of any kinds of feelings for either of them. Um and also there will this will be uh at times it will have more I I wouldn't say outright smut, 
but it will have more adult situations. So please know that going forward. I will, my, I have a blush for my avatar. So if you see my avatar blushing, that will be my sign for the more adulty scenes. I was trying to figure out, I'm like, because I don't have hands. I can't wave or give a thumbs up or something to let you know, like, just so you know. Hydrating. <clears throat> <laughs> Your Highness! Having a heavy person dropped on top of him out of the blue, Mu Han Jang couldn't breathe properly for some time. <laughs> you shouldn't sit up. Quickly, lie down so you can take so you can break your fever, Jing Xiao said happily, immediately moving to stuff himself to su stuff himself back into the quilt and wrap the quilt. Oh. Immediately moving to stuff him back into the quilts and wrap the quilts around him before settling at his side, putting Jin Jen Ching into his embrace. Oh, he bundled them up like a baby. <laughs> it's a Mu Hanjang burrito. <laughs> Mu Hanjang was dumbfounded for only a moment, but by the time he managed to, a reaction, he was already wrapped like a silkworm. Con silkworm cocoon. It was just that there was an extra octopus encompassing him. He didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Indeed, this person did have a quick temper. With his face pressed into Jing Xiao's chest, Mu Han Zheng could only helplessly adjust his position, putting a little distance between them. <laughs> I'm just... Is anyone else... Okay, please picture for a moment... The Aizawa caterpillar without the hood. <laughs> All he can move is his head. <laughs> He's going, what the hell? I don't know. I just thought that was very funny. <laughs> Jun Ching, in the future, if anything happens, I will tell you. If you have any questions or ideas, you must also tell me. This way we can avoid having any quarrels. Jing Ching Jing Ching lifted his head. Oh. Jing Ching lifted his hand and pulled down the headband from the person in the middle of his embrace, stroking the top of his head gently. Is that the wrong name? Just a sec. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna change that. I think that's misprint. Jing Xiao lifted his hand and pulled down the headband from the person in the middle of his embrace, stroking the top of his head gently. Mm. Mm. Mu Han Jiang responded vaguely with a muffle. His consciousness was relaxed, and he was somewhat drowsy. Jun Qing, during the wedding night, I was really unhappy and drank too much. I thought that, this, that since everyone didn't believe in me, then I should just let everyone believe that I'm no good. Jing Xiao narrowed his eyes. Indeed, this is what he thought when he had woken up. But after pondering it over and knowing what will happen in the future, winning that position was not impossible. But when I woke up and saw you, I changed my mind. Mu Han Jiang did not answer. He only listened attentively. Jing Xiao saw that there was no sound from the person in his embrace, and thinking that he was asleep, gently touched that person's hair. <clears throat> I think it is better just to have a good life with you. Whether people believe in me or not, it is not important. In the future, I will protect you and not let you suffer even a single, even a little wrong. Towards the person in his embrace, he was still unsure how he felt. He only knew that this person was the only one who was willing to accompany him through everything, even death. Reborn in this lifetime, 
he harbored suspicions towards everyone at every step, and with every step there was only numerous there was only murderous intentions. Only him, this person, was his redemption. He would embrace him tightly and never let go. The whisper that was said was seemingly gentle, as if Jing Xiao was saying it to himself. Unknowingly, he tightened his embrace towards the person in the middle of his chest and made a soft smile. That's sweet. That's so sweet. I wish my avatar wouldn't frown every time my head looks down. Like, look, I'm I'm smiling, but I'm looking down. His <laughs> avatar is stupid. Okay. Not my avatar. I love my avatar. It's the rigging. It's stupid. I have feelings. Hi. <clears throat> when Mu Hanjang's fever, when Mu Hanjang broke his fever, it was already past noon. Jing Xiao had sent Do Fu to personally deliver a message to the second prince's manor, telling his older brother that he was at fault for not visiting, and may instead visit later that night. Although the imperial family was large and had many people. Their circumstance was special. As they were newly married, they didn't need to pay a courtesy to that many people. At any rate, his personal relationship with his brother had always been not very good. Might as well just pay a courtesy visit to his older brother's family later. Now that it was afternoon, it was inappropriate to go at this time. Instead, he simply changed his clothes and had lunch with his wife till his heart's content. I love the older brother. He's a great character. Who would have guessed that just as the food was being taken away, Dao Fu came to announce that the second prince and his consort had come. Jing Xiao heard this and right away put down his teacup and headed out. Your Highness, Mu Hanjang pulled him back. Change your clothes before you go out. Oh? <laughs> Oh! Jing Xiao smacked his forehead. He forgot that his sister in law would also be there. If he appeared wearing his. <laughs> if he appeared wearing this, it would be improper. Like this, he hurriedly changed his clothes. He didn't think that he would meet his brother so soon after waking up. There were so many things he wanted to say. This time around, he could not be so muddle headed. Your Highness, I will not go. Mu Hanjang pulled back the hand that Jing Xiao was holding. What's wrong? Since it was a formal visit, even if the person is his elder brother, he still had to follow tradition by greeting him and serving tea. In addition, they should also prepare a first meeting gift. Jing Xiao stopped in his tracks to look at him. Mu Hanjang licked his lips. Your Highness did not go to the Second Prince's Manor because I was sick. Although he is your brother, it is still better to avoid a misunderstanding because of this minor incident. Huh? Jing Xiao was dumbfounded for a long time. It took a moment for him to realize that Jen Qing was afraid that his older brother would see that he, Jen Qing, was well, and think that Jing Xiao intent intentionally did not go over to the Second Prince's Manor thus hurting the brother's amicable, I know this word, I just can't pronounce it, amicable, yeah, I think, amicable relationship. <laughs> Apologies. He couldn't help but smile. He held Mu Hanjing, Hanjang's wrist and pulled him close. Ah, fucking words, I'm sucking at this today, really. He held Mu Hanjang's waist and pulled him close, laughing. In the future, if Jun Qing has something to say, then just be straightforward. My brain isn't very good. This is true. Yes, <laughs> his brain's not very good. 
Mu Han Jang took a quick look at him and softly replied, In the future, I will remember it. Your Highness should go quickly. He was aware that the relationship between Jing Xiao and his brother of the same mother was extraordinary. If he has said those words straightforwardly, there would be suspicions that he was trying to sow discord between them. Since he was an outsider who had just crossed into the familial boundary, it would be better for him to be careful that he, with what he said. Jen Qing, are you remembering to speak straight... Are you remembering to speak straightforwardly with me? Or are you noting down that my brain doesn't function well? Seeing that he answered too quickly, Jing Xiao couldn't help but tease him. All remembered. <laughs> All remembered. Mu Han Zhang's expression didn't change. It was still as, in as indifferent as before. Jing Xiao, seeing his... Zhen Qing claim even in a perilous situation expression. <laughs> Seeing his Jin Qing calm even in a perilous situation expression, thought that he was remarkably good looking. After looking around and seeing that no one was paying attention, he stole a kiss on the cheek and quickly went out the door. Mu Han Jang watched Jing Xiao's departing figure. He slowly wiped where he had been kissed on the cheek. The corner of his lips couldn't help but curve upwards. Oh, it's a happy marriage. I love it. <laughs> oh, the worm and fuzzies. Because the second prince's visit was so sudden, Jing Xiao didn't have time to go welcome him. Dao Fu conveniently detected the group of people, directed the group of people into Ting Fang Pavilion to have tea. Tingfang Pavilion was where Jing Xiao normally studied or strolled about. It was considered a, to be a part of the inner courtyard and was only used to receive close get close de, yeah. fucking hell close guests. I'm sorry, so sorry about the words. I'm clearly tired tonight. Blah 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 blah. The structure of the prince's manor was as such. The courtyard in front was the outer courtyard. Passing there was a flower garden, where Ting Fang Pavilion was located. Behind that, the place was the place was further divided into the east residence and west residence. Jing Xiao lived in the east residence, while the women folk resided in the west residence. The tea room was decorated elegantly. The exquisite tables and chairs, many of them were made in the Jingyan style. On all four sides, including the pillars, the walls were carved decoratively. In the winter, when they huddled up into a small circle, it would be quite warm. In the summer, they could conveniently remove the walls to allow for ventilation. On the flower shelves were seasonal flowers and plants. A few had thin vines which wrapped around the pillars. At this time, the soft green buds were already blooming with hints of yellow, filling the place with life. In the tea room, the man sitting at the head seat was dressed in a dark yellow outfit, reserved for princes. His figure was slender and he had an elegant and handsome appearance. Just by sitting there, he had a powerful, but not oppressive, dignified air. Using the five senses, he and Jing Xiao were about 70% similar. It was only that Jing Xiao was three-tenths less austere and a bit more calm. This person was Jing Xiao's older brother of the same mother, Empress Yan's eldest son, Jing Chen. Okay, I must have done that twice. That's my fault. Oh, that's the end of it. Now this time, Jing Chen. Okay. That, that snuck up on me. I don't know about you, but that snuck up on me. I was not expecting that. Hmm. Hmm. 
Mm -mm. So I changed where these air on Twitch from, I changed them from reading fun into the just chatting section. And I'm not sure if that's right to do, but I did it. Um, because there's a lot more people on just chatting. And make sure it's not going to be, I turned that off, right? Yeah. There's a lot more people on just chatting. There's a lot more followers, but also with reading fun, I was finding that there's hardly anyone there. No one looks for reading fun. Uh, let me just see here. I think, in my opinion, Twitch should have the option to sort videos by viewers low to high. I think they should do that because I always go, I want to look at the people who are, don't have a lot of viewers. That's just me. That's, I don't know if that's a lot, of, probably not a lot of people because it's not a feature, but at the same time, I think that that'd be a worthy thing and not terribly hard to add. Excuse me. Let me see who's on here right now. I'm I'm over on Twitch checking out who's currently reading. Any no English. A lot of Portuguese. It's apparently a really big thing, Portuguese reading. But I don't know if they're reading out loud or just reading together. I'm not sure. I haven't actually logged in to see. But yeah. Although probably if I I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to get more viewers. All of my times, the only times that I can stream are apparently bad times for everybody else, which I get, but it's difficult when, you know, you work full time and then uh, I'm not a night. I'm not a night owl. I shouldn't say I am a night owl, but I like quiet time, bedtime, quiet time. I's a baby. My bedtime is 11, and that's when we go CV times. Mm, whenever we can. But yeah. Okay. Huh. Chapter 6 Concubines in the House. Ooh, it's just going to go down. There was a sneer in the corner of the lips. The little tricks of women were really boring. That's good. <laughs> okay, let me just. All right. Ah, why? I got the yawns and they're in my cheeks and I don't know why. Oh, why is my avatar doing that? Gah -gah. Hello, Ghost Wanderer. How are you doing this evening? Hello and welcome. We started a new story. We're still doing the old story, but we're doing this one on Wednesdays? Yes. I hope you are having a good evening. We just started, and shit's about to go. I think you'll like this one. It's a lot funnier. <laughs> are you off now for summer? I know that for the little ones... Or should I say little ones? So much to catch up on. <laughs> yeah, so next Tuesday we'll be all caught up to Married Thrice to Salted Fish, and then we'll be doing this one until the other one. Um, good, I'm glad. How did your studies go? Did you get through them alive successfully? It's been a while. It feels like it's been a while. Oh, oh my goodness. I can't stop yawning. Dare you. Stop it. Mm. Okay. I'm only yawning because I'm not breathing. <clears throat> Gah -gah! The closer he got to the tea hall, the more excited he got, and his footsteps couldn't help but speed up. He hadn't even entered the room and had already called to the person. How was it fun? No. Did I still do good, though? 
Thank God, yes. <laughs> well, that's excellent. Congratulations. I I remember those times and I don't miss them. <laughs> Yui is excellent. He's, well, oh, I got him. We went down to the cottage. Uh, I'm good. Yui is more important. You're right. <laughs> but uh, we went down to the cottage and I got him a little life jacket because he loves to swim. And it was glorious. <laughs> he looked so good. He looks very sporty. Um, and as soon as I get pictures from my family who was taking them because I was in the water with him, I will be posting them on Discord because he was so flippin' cute. And then, I, sh I shouldn't mention this, but it was so funny at the time. Ellie, my mom's dog who doesn't swim, <laughs> fell off the boat. <laughs> now, just to be fair, the boat was parked, we were all stopped, and we were off swimming like we were in the water around it. And she was supposed to stay on and didn't, so she decided to jump off, forgetting that she couldn't swim, I guess. But luckily, I was almost right underneath her, so I got her with one arm. And so she's up on my shoulders. <laughs> Meanwhile, I start to sink. <laughs> and so I grab a hold of the one of the pontoons of the boat, and I'm holding myself up. <laughs> my brother comes floating by on his floaty, gets so close. Come here, Elle. Elle jumps from my shoulders onto him. And she just had a fantastic time <laughs> when she was up and situated. Well, then Ellie, her Yui comes along and he paddles over. He wants to get up too. So then my brother starts sinking in the floaty. And yeah, so it was fun. <laughs> she was taking, <laughs> she was absolutely taking me down with her. Oh God. But the problem was, is that as I was sinking, I'm laughing. <laughs> so <laughs> I got her in one hand and the boat, boat pontoon in the other. And oh, it was... The comedy of errors, it was so funny. <laughs> so yes, that was that was just this last weekend. It was very, very funny. But yeah, everything's good. We are very busy and tired. <laughs> so we're not going down to the cottage this weekend. We're going to rest and get so uh we're we've got a new computer set up that I have yet to actually set up, but we have it and we will be setting it up. I'm glad it was fun. I know. I, I tell that story to other people. They're going, oh my God, is the dog okay? She was fine. She loved it. <laughs> she got to float. But, uh, but yeah. So, oh, uh, another thing is I will be putting all of these episodes, all of my streamed episodes onto uh, the uh, a podcast for the library. And it's simply going to be titled the library podcast edition so that you guys don't waste, if you want to take it with you, you don't waste data. You know what I mean? That was one of my biggest things is that I, oh, I want to listen to this as I walk the dog, but I can't keep YouTube open at all times. If the dog wasn't okay, I'm sure he wouldn't be laughing right now. Oh, I, that's completely true. <laughs> I would be absolutely traumatized. No, she was fine. But th the thing is, is that she looks like a drowned rat. And she's got these ears that stick out the like she's she's got golden retriever ears, but they're slightly too small for her head, so they stick out weird. Oh, oh, she's she's so funny. I gotta get a picture of. It. I hope I think I do have a picture of it somewhere. Someone has a picture. We gotta get. I'll I'll post it on the Discord. So worth it. But oh my God, Yui looked amazing in his. He looked very sporty. He could be a model. Like a puppy dog model. He looked very sporty in his bright fluorescent yellow life jacket. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to start this again. Okay. Oh, uh, to catch you up on this story, uh, Jing Xiao is the top main character. <laughs> top. <laughs> and uh, Mu Han Zhang is the... Secondary main character is the love interest. Uh, Jing Xiao and um, Mu Han Zheng died in their past life, and Jing Xiao was an asshole. And so Jing Xiao has been time traveled back be when they first got married, and now they're very um, sticky and lovey and ridiculous together, and it's great. <laughs> so this is a lot more comedy.
Oh yeah, the uh Yeah, so the past life, it was very um it's like, oh, now they're in love. So he kind of they're very yeah, they're very lovey dovey. Like very much so. It's not at all like married thrice in that there uh there's any question. We love development. He very yeah, he basically he woke up next to his husband and Jing Xiao woke up next to his husband and said, right, we're all in. <laughs> so he's absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. The other thing is, is that he's not super duper smart. <laughs> there, there are times when you, he's a bit of a himbo, <laughs> but he's fun. We like him. And, and oh, he he doesn't put up with any kind of shit either. Well, when it, as we go through, like it'll explain all the crap that happened to him. But I guess his the only person to stand by him while all this shit was going down, and he was, you know, imprisoned. I think they mentioned uh, the only person to stand by him was the husband that he neglected. So now they're back, and he's not taking any prisoners. <laughs> Gaga! The closer he got to the tea hall, the more excited he got, and his footsteps couldn't help but speed up. He hadn't even entered the room and had already called to the person. Jing Chen put down the teacup in his hand and wrinkled his brow slightly. Seeing Jing Xiao, who was hurriedly walking in the co walking in his direction, he couldn't help but scold. You are already married now, and still so impatient. You shouldn't be like this. Jing Xiao repressed his natural disposition and stopped, then shook his head as he forced a smile. Ever since he was small, he was used to being reprimanded by his brother, and once he heard him, he began scolding. All he wanted to do was run. But now, as he heard the sentence, you shouldn't be like this, there was an incomparable sense of familiarity and he only hoped that his brother would, from now on, reprimand him for a long time. <clears throat> he walked in casually, and seeing his brother furrowing his brow, staring at him, he couldn't help but smile and go over to pay respects to his elder brother and sister-in-law. Xu Xu? His sister-in-law, Consort Xiao, who was sitting next to him, rose and returned the greeting. Seeing that Jing Chen was still cold-faced and not speaking, she smiled and said, Originally we weren't supposed to come. However, hearing that young... Hearing that younger brother was unwell and not seeing your, you go to your office, your brother was not at ease, so he brought me here with him. In other, in ordinary people's families, they went over to their parents, brothers, and sister-in-laws to pay respects in the morning, and in the afternoon they would visit their parents-in-law. So, although them coming this time was somewhat unexpected, it was still acceptable. Jing Xiao naturally understood the reason behind it. Hearing his sister-in-law say this, he raised his head and looked at his brother, whose brow was still wrinkled. He suddenly felt warm in his heart. During his last life, he was really blind, thinking that his brother wrinkling his brow at him every time he saw him was thinking he, Jing Xiao, was an eyesore. Yet not knowing that this person was doing so much for him in places he was not aware of. <clears throat> brother. Jing Xiao slowly walked in front of his elder brother and opened his mouth. Yet only that one word came out. <coughs> Jing Cheng stared blankly. Astonished, he raised his head to look at him. Since their imperial father had decreed for him to marry the second son of the Marquis Bei Wei, <coughs> this younger brother, whom he had loved and protected ever since he was a child, would not call him brother again. When meeting each other, he would only call out, Second Imperial Prince, making his heart ache. 
Today, he didn't have any hopes that Jing Xiao would come visit him. But he did not expect the stewards of the prince's manor to personally come and apologize for shirking their meeting previously, allowing him to raise some hope in his heart. After waiting until noon had passed and seeing that he had still not come, he couldn't sit still and went over himself. He didn't expect that there would be such a pleasant surprise. Seeing that the two brothers seemed to have words to say to each other, Consort, Consort Xiao smiled as she got up and said, I will go and see Yuri Wang Fei. Sao Xi, Jing Cheng has, Jun Cheng has not gotten up yet. You and Gugu wait here for just a moment. I'll go call him to come out. Jing Xiao quickly blocked Consort Xiao. Oh, look at me, I'm all muddled. Consort Xiao blinked for a second, then annoyingly, then annoyedly wrung her, her ah, handkerchief in her hands. So embarrassed that her face turned crimson. His Wang Fei is a man. Although she is, although she is his sister-in-law, he is still a man, and she couldn't just go visit his bedside. But his elder brother could go in, but his elder brother could go into the bedroom and visit his sister-in-law. Yeah, backwards. Jing Chen glanced thoughtfully at his wife, got up, and said to Jing Xiao, "Younger brother's consort is sick. Don't make him suffer. I will go. I will go with you to see." I love the older brother. Oh my god, I love the older brother. I, he reminds me a lot of um, Lan Wenji. Very stoic and misunderstood and hardly any expression, but feels deeply. Dao Fu, who was on the side, who was on the side, heard this and quietly called the little servant girl to run fast and go and form, inform the Wang Fei. When Jing Xiao took his brother into the bedroom of the East Wing, he saw Mu Han Zheng wearing an outer garment, leaning on a soft divian, yeah, a divan, in the outer room, covered with a thin blanket. The outer garment was loose and had a soft texture. At first glance, one could tell it was something for wearing at home. Although it was not very formal, the way the clothing was tied was very neat and proper and seeing that the person in question was sick, it was also not considered lacking in manners. Looking at this situation, Jing Chen nodded to himself and stopped Mu Han Jiang's action of getting up to greet. How come on the second day of being newly married you are already sick? Jing Chen looked at his younger brother. Today, when he heard that Cheng Wang's wife was ill, his first reaction was wondering what must have happened when visiting the court in the morning. This... Jing Xiao coughed lightly, rubbed his nose. No matter how thick one's skin is, under his brother's gaze he would still blush a little. <laughs> He's injured from their wedding night, just FYI. <laughs> Mu Han Zheng looked at the embarrassed Jing Xiao, slightly curved his mouth, and said, Elder brother Prince does not have to worry. I just caught a little cold and had a bit of a fever. Drinking some medicine has helped bring it down. Hmm, right. Marquis Beiwei's family is too stingy. The wedding dress is made too th was made so thin. Jing Xiao busily went along with it, Yet trying to cover it up only made it more conspicuous, and Mu Han Zhang could not help but roll his eyes. <clears throat> Jing Chen looked at his younger brother and sighed. You, come to the study with me. I have some words to say to you. Jing Xiao hung his head dejectedly, and he was and was dragged away. But before he was completely out the door, he turned back and made a pitiful expression towards Mu Han Zhang. <laughs> Mu Han Zhang was amused by his appearance. He did not know that such a normally taciturn and grave person would, in front of his own brother, 
actually turn into a small child, and he couldn't help but laugh out. The elegant as a lily magnolian nobleman suddenly revealed a vibrant smile, creating a bright countenance that could indescribably move someone. Jing Xiao, seeing him smile, and smiling so beautifully, contentedly followed his brother into the study room to be admonished. <clears throat> this one wishes sister-in-law good health. Cor Consort Xiao looked at this. Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this bitch. Okay. I'm aware. <clears throat> Prepare for drama. Consort Xiao looked at the full of greetings song... Song Li Ling Xin, Song Ling Xin, and couldn't help but wrinkle her brow. FYI, Song Ling Xin's the bitch. Just watch for it. <laughs> this person was Jing Xiao's secondary wife. She had already crossed the threshold two years ago. By rights, she was allowed to call her Xiao Zi, but now that now the Wang Fei had already crossed the threshold. Yet this Madame Song still appeared in the tea room like she was the mistress, dressed in water pink embroidered gauze dress, wearing a beaded golden phoenix hairpin, so ostentatiously. How, how come you have come? Consort Xiao was still nervous about that glare the second prince had given her. He didn't glare, did he? <clears throat> now, seeing this kind of Song Ling Xin made her feel even more agitated. And without such politeness, she just directly asked that. Wang Yi and His Highness, the Second Prince, have something to talk about, and this servant thought that Xiao Zi drinking tea all alone must be boring. So I prepared some tea and refreshments in the small reception pavilion, especially to invite Xiao Xi, Xiao, Xiao Xi to go and taste. Song Ling Xin said this cleverly, deliberately using ambiguous words to imply that Jing Xiao had instructed her to do this. Consort Xiao thought about it. This Wang Fei, I don't know if it's Wang or Wong, this Wang Fei, that sounds better, was a man and couldn't entertain her. Having a secondary wife accompany her to drink tea was also not inappropriate. Moreover, those two brothers had been gone for this long and were still not back. They definitely had some big political event to discuss. So she rose and followed Concubine Song to the West Courtyard. <clears throat> Young master. Young master. This slave here that... Oh, 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 sorry. Young master, this slave heard that the second prince's wife went to the secondary wife to this... Invite... Uh, went with the secondary wife to the small reception pavilion to drink tea. Lan Ting replenished Mu Han Jiang's tea and whispered to him. Oh? Mu Han Jiang, who reclined on the divian, looked up from his book and with some mirth glanced at the nervous little girl. Where did you hear this from? Lan Ting's character was quite quick-witted, just young. The time following the time following him was also short, so she couldn't help but be a little timid. Today, she actually took the initiative to try and find out some news. Naturally, he had to encourage her a little. <laughs> so cute. When I went to the tea room to replenish the water, I heard Sister Meng Xi say it. Lan Ting bit her lip and her face was quite angry. The tone of Meng Xi was clearly praising the secondary wife, yet towards this young master gave a cold shoulder, as if, revu as if, re as if reveling in schadenfreude. Mu Han Zheng nodded. You did well. Then he immediately moved his eyes back to the book. Yes. <laughs> young master... Lan Ting was very dissatisfied with her young master's uncaring attitude. You don't even know what Meng Xi said. 
Wu Han Jiang looked up grudgingly, his tone serene. She must have said that the Wang Fei has got, just gotten married, and on the second day, he's already supp suppressed. He was already suppressed by the secondary wife. In the future, she doesn't know who she should listen to. Right? Lan Ting was surprised, and her eyes were wide open. Young master, how did you know? Mu Hanjang shook his head and smiled. This foolish girl. Everything was written on her face. Even if he didn't want to know it, it would be hard not to tell. <clears throat> Reporting to Wang Fei, Wang Yi had me come tell you that he was being... That he will be having dinner with his highness, the second prince, so you don't have to wait for him. Ji Shi. Oh, is this one of the bitches just now? One second. Okay, no, that needs a different voice. I know this one. I think, I think this is the one I was thinking of. Reporting to Wang Fei. Wang Yi had me tell you that he will be having dinner with His Highness, the Second Prince, so you don't have to wait for him. Ji Shi came in and delivered the message, and let the person carrying the food box put it down. All right. Mu Han Jiang put down the book in his hand and sat down at the dinner table. At noon, when he had had a fever, he had no appetite. Now he was really hungry. Ji Shi personally stood at the table and served the dishes. Mu Han Jiang picked up the rice bowl and looked at the full table full of exquisite dishes. It was much more luxurious than at the Bei Wei Ma Marquis's residence, and when marrying into the Wang Yi's family, it was not necessarily it was not necessary to pay respects to his mother in law every day. If a woman married into the Chang Wei house and wouldn't she be very happy? <clears throat> Thinking of Jing Xiao's tender smile, Mu Han Jiang couldn't help but sigh. If he was a daughter born of a concubine from the Marquis Bei Wei's family, and was definitely not qualified to marry Cheng Wei, he still wondered whether his situation would be fortunate or unfortunate. Ji Shi. Is there a map of this place? Is there a map of this place? After dinner, Mu Han Jiang held a, uh, held a cup of tea and asked on a whim. I don't know why I'm stuttering so much. It's weird. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Responding to Wang Fei. There is a map in the small study room. The slave will go look for it for you. Ji Shi respectfully answered. The small study room is in the east wing, not far from the bedroom, and she soon returned with the map. Mu Han Jiang regarded Ji Shi, actually being able to go into the study to get something for him, was inevitably surprised. Jing Xiao would actually let him look at the things in the study as he pleased? He didn't believe that without Jing Xiao's permission that servant girl would be able to go where... That servant girl would be able to get whatever for him. But then he thought that perhaps he was thinking too much. The small study could really just not have any important secrets. He slowly opened the scroll in his hand. The precise style of painting was obviously one of a thoroughly planned out design. The outline of the prince's manner was clear with a glance. The residence was divided into the four... <coughs> The residence is divided into the front and rear two courtyards, which are separated by the flower gardens and the Tang Fang Pavilion. The Ting Fang Pavilion included a tea hall, study room, a warming room, water room, and other such places. The rear court was divided into east and west courtyards, and the east wing is Jing Xiao's residence, the west for the women folk. Because Mu Han Zhang is not considered part of the women folk, he couldn't live in the West Wing, and so he just lived in the East Wing together with Jing Xiao. His gaze swept through the whole painting and finally settled on the Bamboo Pavilion. This should be what they called the Small Reception Pavilion, which is located in the center of the West Court. 
Liu Han Jiang closed the scroll. He is a man. Having the secondary wife receive his elder brother and sister-in-law was what ought to be. But whether this is what Jing Xiao instructed Madame Song to do, or what she did on her own accord, the significance of it was very different. Reporting to Wang Fei, the two concubines of the West Courtyard have come to greet Wang Fei and have tea. Meng Shi came in from the outside courtyard, smiling gleefully, and said, secretly observing the rea and said, secretly observing the reaction of Mu Han Jiang. Huh? Hearing <clears throat> Mu Han Jiang hearing what was said, couldn't help but slightly frown. Chang Wang had a <clears throat> Cheng Wang had a secondary wife and two concubines. This he knew even before their marriage. Today, both of them had come to greet him, yet somehow the good at understanding others and knowing when to advance and retreat, secondary wife, had not come? Was she trying to demonstrate something to him, or trying to feel out the prince's attitudes towards him? The corner of his lips turned up in a smile. Women's little tricks were truly so boring. He got up and changed his clothes, letting the two concubines wait in the reception room. Not hurrying and not being too slow, he switched into a long sapphire blue garment and didn't even wear a crown on his head. He let, he let Lan Ting use a hair ribbon of the same color and tie his hair as she wished. Finally, he called for the two concubines to enter the room. <clears throat> Ji Xi, seeing the instruction, seeing the situation at hand, also couldn't help but frown. In her heart, she thought, could it be that the secondary wife had gone with the prince to send off the guests? But on her face, she had a smile, introducing Mu Han Jiang to them. Dressed in a phoenix yellow dress with gentle and lovely countenance was fourth rank concubine Liu. And in the jade colored dress, Delicate and spirited was fifth rank concubine Li. <clears throat> the author has something to say. The forms of address of a prince's wives and concubines. Info from Beidu. Highest rank, principal wife. Abbreviation, Wang Fei. Secondary wife, side slash secondary wife. Abbreviation, Fu Ren, Madam, Lady. Third rank, Chi Fei, official concubine. Fourth rank, Wang Ji. That's wrong. Wang Ji. <laughs> Wang Ji, female entertainer, concubine. Fifth rank, Xi Qi, bed servant, attendant, concubine. Sixth rank, Bai Qi, Bei Qi. Inferior concubine. The saying of Di Xu is derived from Master Lu Bingling's court marriage. Because I like this form of address very much and also can't think of other suitable ones, I just used it. Court marriage is a big love. I recommend anyone to go and read it. It tells a story about a small gong who is married off to a small shoe. Show. P.S. The woman from the rear court is cannon fodder. Our Jing Xiao is resolute and will not have an affair. I promise. I paid the internet fee this morning. It only turned on now. Ying ying. Okay, so these two, fourth rank, the Wang Ji, female entertainer slash concubine. And that's the one in the yellow dress. And in the jade dress, delicate and spirited, was fifth rank, Shi Qi, bed servant, attendant, concubine. Mm. Okay, hold on one moment. I just want to turn off a light real quick. And then we'll jump on to chapter seven. Yay! This 
sound of unsticking yourself from a chair is not attractive. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 7. Back to the door. Jen Cheng, do you remember what I said yesterday? Uh, for the fourth rank. Mm. Yan Ji pays respects to Wang Fei. Wang Fei, please drink some tea. Fourth rank concubine Liu greeted, full of respect. She gave Mu Han Jiang a I fucking hate this word, a kowtow, then offered up a small cup a servant girl passed to her. Her lovely face was lowered while her eyes did not have much expression. Muhan Jiang took a sip of tea and rewarded her with a string of pearls from the South China Sea. When she received it, he allowed her to rise. This servant now... I hate this word. This servant kowtows to Wang Fei, congratulating Wang Fei on your new marriage and wishing you great happiness. With a light and cheerful tone, hearing it, it was definitely one trying to curry favor. Concubine Li was a Xi Qi, a fifth rank concubine. She could not call herself by a title. It was only suitable to use this servant. However, she was originally born from a maid. So the words, this servant, flowed out extremely smoothly. Get up, then. Mu Han Jiang put down the teacup and rewarded concubine Li with a pair of golden hairpins. Female accessories, naturally, were none, of, were none in his diary. Ah, fucking hell. <laughs> Female accessories, naturally, there were none in his dowry. The people at Marquis Bei Wei's residence would also not buy them for him. This was all secretly given to him by his mother some nights before he was married off, fearing that he would be belittled by the concubines. Meng Xie saw that when the Wang Fei gave out rewards, he was quite liberal, so her original statement of staying to watch a show was repressed. In her heart, she thought about how other people said that taking in a bastard son was worth more than the daughter of, offic of an official wife. When the daughter of the official wife was married off, she would only get her share of, a, of dowry silver. But after bastards were married off, they would still be able to claim their share of family property. Mu Han Jiang looked down and said slowly, I am a man. In the future, when you are doing or saying anything, you must abide by the proper etiquette. For the morning and evening visits, you only need to come and informally give your greetings. Greetings. Other times, it is not necessary for you to stay and wait upon me. His clear and smooth voice was extremely nice to listen to, and the, and the not-so-fast, not-too-slow speed carried authority that one would not be able to defy. The two hurriedly lifted themselves up, and Concubine Lee also put away her amused expression. If there is nothing else, then please, then just go back. Is that... Oh. Sorry, I thought I was hearing something in my headphones. Mu Han Jiang said indifferently. Concubine Lee... Concubine Liu Yan, Liu Yan gave a look to Concubine Li. Concubine Li rolled her eyes, and smiling, she said, Thanking Wang Fei, it's just that Fu Ren was still not a, has still not come. These servants will just wait outside the door to return to, return to the West Court together. Sorry, let me try that again. Thanking Wang Fei, it's just that Fu Ren still has not come. These servants will just wait outside the door to, to return to the West Court together. The good show was still not over. They couldn't just go like this. Through Mu Han Jiang's lowered, eye, lowered eyes flashed a cold light. 
he was slightly intolerant towards women's little tricks. As he was about to have them go wait in the reception hall, he heard a woman's laughter coming from outside the door. She has never seen Wang Yi like this. The voices grew closer and closer, and soon they saw Jing Xiao striding in. On his face was a faint smiling on his face was a faint smiling expression. But when he saw clearly the people in the room, his face immediately grew cold. It was pardonable to have to walk with her. It was pardonable to have to walk with her after meeting her on his way. Yet she was actually using him as a cover for being late to pay respects to the Wong Fei. The concubines were already here, but she was not. Who was she putting on airs for? The joyful and happy state of mind he was in after chatting freely with his brother for the whole afternoon was immediately annoyed away by Song Ling Shi. Jing Xiao's change in expression naturally fell into the eyes of Mu Han Jiang. In his heart, he thought, this secondary wife is sure enough rather favored and he couldn't help but purse his lips. Younger sisters are all here, Song Ling, Xi. Song Ling Xin said, um, dressed in vibrant water pink dress, pretended to say with surprise. She walked in front of Mu Han Jiang and went to pay her respects. Because we were sending off Elder Brother and his wife, I came late, hoping Brother will not mind. Brother. When Mu Han Jiang heard this form of address, he only felt that the veins on his forehead were suddenly pulsing. Normally, the secondary wife is allowed to dress the official wife as sister, but he was a man, and should be called brother. But after hearing it, why did it sound so awkward? From now on, still address him as Wang Fei. You are not allowed to call him brother. Not waiting for the people involved to say anything, Jing Xiao had already opened his mouth. Wang Yi? Madame Song heard these words and aggrievedly looked towards Jing Xiao. Calling him brother was her privilege as the secondary wife. This kind of request from Wang Yi was slapping her in the face in front of Wang Fei. Jing Xiao clearly did not pay attention to her grievances. In his heart, her utterance of brother seemed like how one would address their boyfriend. So remember, in this, whenever they're saying brother, she's saying gaga. So let me say, where did she say it here? It would probably sound like hoping gaga will not blame. Yeah, she's saying it like a trollop. Let's see here. Hearing it somehow irritated his ears. With that said, ignoring the reaction of the guests, he leaned on the back of the divan. I always called it a divian, but it's not. Divan. Divan? 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 Devan. No. <laughs> I'm going to continue calling it divian. Know that that's not the right way to say it. Just know that. I am pronouncing it incorrectly leaned on the back of the divian and picked up the book that Mu Han Jiang had only read half of to take a look. Song Ling Xin thought this boring and could only obediently kneel to perform her greetings, offering up tea. Mu Han Jiang gave her a pair of green jade bracelets. The purity and style were wholly top grade. When Madame Song saw it, in her heart she was astounded. This bastard son, this bastard son of Marquis Bei Wei, didn't the rumors say that he received no favor in the Marquis's household? Muhan Jiang did not care that these what these women were thinking, and after admonishing them with a couple sentences, he let them return to the West Court. Although these concubines all looked pretty good, beside all those, besides all the cosmetics and jewels. These were all his husband's women. 
thinking about this, his heart felt extremely uncomfortable. No matter how beautiful the woman, he would still no longer be able to admire. Yeah, sure, that's why your heart's uncomfortable. Mm hmm. We don't believe you. The room finally quieted down. Mu Hanjang felt that confronting those women for a short while was even more tiring than reading books for an entire day. Yes, this is an introvert after my own heart. I love it. Seeing that his book was snatched by Jing Xiao, he had Le he had Lan Xion, this is a new one, Lan Xian, go find another one. Young master, the jade water scriptures are in the big cabinet of the storeroom. It is not easy to find now that it has gotten dark, Lan Xian said embarrassed. When building the residence, naturally there would not be a study room left for the Wang Fei. However, Mu Han Zhang has many books, and he could only place a few that he frequently reads in the bedroom. The rest were all in the storeroom. Mu Han Zhang sighed, waved his, head, waved his hand, and said, All right, just go get a random book from the small chest. Lan Xian really didn't know how to respond to this. It seemed no matter what she straightforwardly said, it would seem like complaining in it would seem like complaining in front of the Wang Yi. Jing Xiao looked up. Seeing that his brow was slightly furrowed, his heart couldn't help but hurt. Hmm. You don't have to go looking for it. I was just randomly taking a look. As he said that, he reached out his hand to give the book back to him. Mu Hanjang just had to walk over and receive it. Yet, unexpectedly, he was pulled onto the soft divian by Jiang Xiao. Mu Hanjang, who was not prepared, was pulled onto Jing Xiao's body, and his face immediately turned red. Then he busily began to struggle. Wang Yi! Jing Xiao sat up with a smile and embraced the waist of the other, not letting go. Sit on the divian. Let's read it together. Ji Xi, seeing this, giggled as she took the servant girls to withdraw outside. Mu Han Zhang's face blushed furiously, yet the person behind him seemed as if he were not in the least bit aware, even resting his chin on his shoulder. Does your body... Does your body still feel uncomfortable? The place where his chin was resting against began to itch, and Mu Han Jiang moved uncomfortably. It's much better. Don't take those concubines to heart. Concubine Li was arranged for me in the court when I was young. Concubine Yan was gifted by Elder Imperial Prince last year. I haven't touched her since the beginning. Jing Xiao hugged the person in his arms and moved him up a bit so that Mu Han Jiang could lean on his body more and reduce the burden on his waist and butt. Originally, he felt that there was nothing much to having three wives or four concubines. But now that he was in front of Jun Qing, whose dark eyes seemed to be able to see through everything, Jing Xiao felt weak and automatically began to solemnly explain on his own accord. Oh, if only all men did that. That'd be lovely. Oh, I shouldn't say men. Just all spouses did that. That'd be great. <coughs> <coughs> Mu Han Jiang turned to look at him. Was this person helping him understand the real position of each of the women in the household so that he could more easily supervise them? Really? Although he really had not one bit of interest in managing this group of women, it was indeed useful for his survival here. He pondered for a moment, then unhurriedly said, Today, Elder Prince's wife came. It was Shen's negligence. Thankfully, second wife was sharp-witted, and Elder Brother's wife was not slighted. <laughs> I also forgot about Xiao Si. Xiao Si. 
I only remembered when I was at dinner. Jing Xiao thought about how he and his brother had spoken openly to each other today, and on his face began to appear that smiling expression. It seemed that Madame Song was acting on her own accord. Mu Han Jiang understood clearly now. Jing Xiao looked down at the person in his arms, and seeing him still thinking deeply, he finally realized that Mu Han Jiang had just praised Song Ling Xin. The smile on his face immediately disappeared. What was so good about that woman that Jing Sh that Jin Qing even praised her astuteness? Song Ling Xin, her father is the assistant minister of war. It was because when I went to war, I was afraid that he would make trouble, so I, so I just had her cross the threshold. Get married. As he spoke, his tone could not help but get colder and colder. In his last life, he was fame. He was framed by everyone. Song An, who had already risen in the who had already risen to the high rank of Minister of War, had always just shrunk back in his head, refusing to refute the charges on his behalf with a sentence or two. Finally, he even used some tricks to mess with the records of marriage to protect his daughter, and that woman just fled the prince's manor for her life. Cats and dogs still knew to protect their lord to the death, yet that woman, as if she was not at all to blame, actually exposed her own husband and sent him to prison. Surely she had already long ago taken the evidence of crimes to his imperial father to show off her accomplishments. Muhan Jang quietly listened to him and actually heard and actually heard about him not favoring Madame Song. Within those two pretty eyes of his revealed a loneliness that he himself was not able to detect. Oh, good. It's gonna be, you're gonna hear some barking, but it's all okay. Muhan Jang couldn't help but reach out his hand as if to stroke the outer corner of his eye, but also did not know what he was trying to do. So I think Muhan Jang is still. Uh, not conflicted, cautious, still cautious. Well, <clears throat> Jing Xiao was surprised by the movements of the person in his arms, but he did not dare to move. He watched him try to touch his face like a cat and held his breath, fearing that he would alarm him. The man just put his fingertips the man just put his fingertips by the corner of his eyes and didn't move. Jing Xiao couldn't help but slightly tilt his head and land a kiss on the soft palm. Hmm. Mu Han Jiang's mind returned and he exhaled lightly. As if he had been scalded, he quickly withdrew his hand. He also jumped down from the divian. Tomorrow, we still have to go visit my parents. It, it's better to rest earlier. He feigned calmness to finish saying this, and then turned around to go back to the bedroom. Jing Xiao watched his fi figure fleeing in defeat and couldn't help but suppress the sound of his laughter as he got up and followed him in. These chapters are long. I don't know why I thought they weren't, but they are. Mm -hmm. Maybe not long, just it seems long to me. <laughs> <coughs> 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 he 
You're... Oh, sorry. <coughs> eh. No, I've still got a tickle. One sec. <coughs> Your Highness, today this one really didn't have any intentions. On the carriage back to the prince's manor, Consort Xiao looked at, looked at her own husband. Jing Chen glanced at her and said in a deep voice, Having intentions is all right. Not having intentions is also all right. Just remember, Jing Xiao is my younger brother. I won't allow anyone using any methods to harm him. Even if it was their imperial father... Even if it was their imperial father, it was not allowed. The last sentence he did not say out loud, but Consort Xiao could hear it in his tone, and she quickly agreed, but in her heart she couldn't help but worry. You are treating someone else like your younger brother, but that person may not necessarily feel grateful. Jing Chen thought that his brother had... thought what his... Jing Chen thought what his brother had said in the study, and could not help but happily smile. His family's little Xiao Er finally grew up. I love the older brother. Oh, good. On the third morning, they were to visit Mu Hanjiang's parents. Chang Wang's family... Chang Wang's family of husband... Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm so confused. Chang Wang's family of husband and husband rose early to freshen up. Wang Yu. Sitting in the carriage, Mu Hanjiang hesitated to open his mouth, pursed his lips, and swallowed his words. Huh? Huh? Jing Xiao turned his head. Seeing that he had an expression that was like he wanted to say something but was hesitating, he reached out and tightly held his hands in his palms. Junqing, do you remember what I said yesterday? Mu Han Jiang raised his head and directly looked into Jing Xiao's dark eyes that were full of tenderness, and suddenly his heart felt lighter. If my father mentions the Jing Nan... Jing Nan, if my father mentions the Jing Nan salt certification matter, Wang Yi, you don't need to agree. Salt the certification. After this reminder, Jing Xiao just remembered that this year, Marquis Bei Wei really did want to borrow his hand to create a salt root business. Salt has always been controlled by local authorities since ancient times. To be exact, the control was in the hands of several high provincial officials. Jing Nan as the, is the source of the salt, and the general of Jing Nan is also on good terms with him. So the people who wanted to borrow him to help establish a salt trade are not little. It was just that, on that year, it was also one of the crimes he was charged with. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. We can't do this. <clears throat> I'm, I'm just going to go for it. Chapter 8. Ho Fu. Mu Ling Bao looked... Mu Ling Bao looked at his clothes and bearing and hated his teeth. That's a neat way of saying hated everything about him. <laughs> Unexpectedly, there are actually people who don't miss their parents' house. Hearing Mu Han Jiang's words, Jing Xiao only felt warmth in his heart. I'm not sure if... Wait, let me see. I'm not sure. I think that's... Uh, okay, never mind. Try that again. Eh, try that again.
unexpectedly, there are actually people who don't miss their parents' house. Hearing Mu Hanjang's words, Jing Xiao only felt warmth in his heart. Yes, that makes more sense. And he could not help but open his mouth to tease him again. Mu Hanjang took his hand back and, and turned his head away to look out the window, ignoring him. Jing Xiao smiled, simply laid down on the wide seat of the carriage, and sighed. Previously, when I did things, I never thought over them before beforehand. So Jun Cheng must, re so must, uh. so Jun Cheng must remind me a lot in the future. Otherwise, I will sooner or later make bad decisions until I truly make a grave mistake. Mu Hanjiang was silent for a while. When Jing Chao thought that he wouldn't speak again, he heard him agree quietly. Thus, Jing Xiao squirmed like a big snake and wriggled at it to his side. He stretched his arms around his narrow waist and stuck his face into it before rubbing back and forth. I'm assuming like a big cat. Just... Junching, mm -hmm. tell me about the situation of Marquis. It would be good if I had... It would be good if I have a response prepared. His back stiffened as a result of having a big head rub against him. <laughs> so Mu Hun Jang could only turn around to tear off the person who was sticking to him. Jing Xiao released his hands on his own initiative and seized the opportunity to rest his head on the other's lap. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um... Looking down at the guy who looked as if he belonged there, Mu Hun Jang only felt that there was a deep sense of powerlessness. There was a large population living in the Marquess's household, and the father of Mu Hun Jang is the current North Marquess. Because the old Marchioness is still alive, there was no separation of the household. Several cousins also live in the residence. The inheritors of the house were not much. The North Marquess has a pair of daughters, and then there was him, the bastard. The rest of the concubines still have no heirs. Then your father is quite fleeting with his affections. Jing Xiao looked up at him, just to see the beautiful lines of his chin and his delicate Adam's apple that slid down his exquisite throat. Maybe. Towards this topic, Mu Han Jang did not want to say too much. Our family situation is complicated. If you are not willing to deal with it, just ignoring it is all right. During these past two days, he has discovered that Jing Xiao is not very good with receiving people, especially those influential officials who have tricks and turns. He couldn't help but explain with a few sentences to him. I am a prince who can still... <laughs> I am a prince who can still bully me. Jing Xiao wanted to laugh and say that he was overthinking, but when the words were on the tip of his tongue, they actually changed. He said, I understand. It was not long before they arrived at the residence of the North Marquess. The two men straightened out their clothes and walked out together. Mu Han Jang opened his hand that was be opened his hand that was being grasped by Jing Xiao, but he could not compete with him, and also could not make a big move, so he could only let him have his way. I Mu Jin. Bring the people of the North Marquess's residence. Bring the people of the North Marquess's residence to welcome Wang Yi and Wang Fei. The North Marquess Mu Jin stood in front while leading everyone as they knelt down to kowtow in salute. Originally, during the first turn of the bride, originally during the first return of the bride to her home. The new son-in-law should first greet his new father and mother-in-laws, 
But if the person is from the imperial household, the wife's parents' people conversely had to greet the new son-in-law. <clears throat> Muhan Jang looked at all his elder cousins kneeling before him. He couldn't say what kind of feeling in his heart his heart felt. Fortunately, Jing Xiao was always holding his hand as if telling him, Don't be afraid. I will support you. Before, he used to only think about passing the civil exams to gain scholarly honor, so these people could look at him with value. Now, it seems that this goal has been achieved in a strange way. At the very least, no one in North Marquis's residence now dares to bully him. Feeling that the man was slowly returning his grip, Jing Xiao's eyes showed a smiling expression, and his clear voice allowed everyone to get up. Then the North Marquis led them into the residence. The brothers of Mu Jin were all considered children of concubines and couldn't inherit the title. Therefore, his first wife's eldest son, Mu Ling Bao, stood by his side. He had already been appointed the heir the year before the last. Mu Ling Bao looked white and tender. Perhaps it was because it was... Perhaps it was because it was just after the New Year's celebrations. Elder brother has... Oh. Elder brother has... Elder brother has the capacity of an heir. These etiquettes should be clearer to you than to your younger brother. Muhan Jang also did not look at him, just merely held up his posture and walked forward slowly. I don't know, that's... I'm confused by that. Muling Bao looked at his attire and his temperament, and he hated him so much that his teeth itched. In his heart, he thought that this bastard seems to have fallen into the nest of fortune. Mu Jin glared at his eldest son and smiled at Jing Xiao, saying, It is still early inviting Wang Yi to go out to the front hall with his humble servant to partake in tea to allow Wang Fei to go see his mother, then come to the front hall to begin the banquet. Jing Xiao glanced at the person at his side. Seeing him nod, he slowly let go of the hand he had been holding. You are still sick. Don't tire yourself out too much. Yes. Muhan Jang responded with a single word and smiled at him gently. He followed Mu Ling Bao to the rear, to the rear court. Ji Xi and Lan Ting waited for several slave girls and eunuchs to go first before they followed behind. The entourage was long and quite magnificent. The interactions of the two after they got off their carriage all fell into the eyes of Mu Jin. It was quite surprising to find that. Muhan Jang was not blamed, but actually very favored. At the same time, the North Marquis breathed a sigh of relief. He was more sure about being able to rely on Wang Yi to find a business path. This asshole. The smile on his face could not help but be more brilliant. Oh, look, look, our Wang Fei is back. The voice was exactly that of the big-mouthed third aunt, but Mu Han Jiang also ignored it. He went straight to the main house and stood in front of the main door. When the Wang Fei returns to her mother's house, all wives and unmarried ladies must immediately pay respects. Ji Xi stood by Mu Han Jiang's side, announcing to everyone with a dignified air. All the aunts and cousins stared blankly, only to realize that this person had already become a high-ranked Chang Wang Fei, and he no long was no longer the bastard child that received no favor. The North Marquess's wife, Madame Du, smiled and stood up from her mistress's seat. 
she led all the womenfolk along with her to pay respects. Respectfully welcoming Chang Wang Fei's visit home. Mother, please rise. Mu Han Jiang stepped forward to help his official mother, also allowing the others to get up. Regarding Mu Han Jiang's bearing, the North Marchioness was very satisfied, and she took his hand and let him, let him sit on the mistress's spot with herself. Mu Han Jiang looked around. Behind North Marquess's Fu Ren stood the concubines. Of the four of them, three were present. Only his own birth mother was missing. Have you gotten used to living with to living in the prince's mansion? Madame Du was in no hurry to discuss the matter of his mother, and amiably asked the question the first wife should ask. Replying to mother, everything is fine. Muhan Jang was worried in his heart, but he couldn't directly ask. It would be disrespectful to the first wife. Has mother's body been healthy recently? After Madame Du's birth of a little daughter, her body was not, has not been very good. She looked much thinner than the average married woman, so even if she was smiling, she had a sharp look to her. I'm glad that you have so much filial piety. My body is quite robust, but concubine Chu was stricken with illness the day before. Without her by my side, doing anything is not convenient. Mu Han Jang's long sleeves hid his hands that curled into, into fists, but his face did not reveal anything. With the care of mother, Yinang, Yinang will definitely get better. Wang Yi just let his... Wang Yi just let this son bring some snow ginseng back. Give to mother and Yinang to help them heal. As he said this, the little eunuch behind him came forward and presented a box of snow ginseng. A cold light flashed through the eyes of the Marquis's wife, but she smiled and let the maidservant receive it. My husband, the Marquis, arranged for you to go to the front hall to attend the banquet in the afternoon. Even if you stay with this group of women, it will not be interesting. Take this opportunity to go see Concubine Chu, then. Waiting for Mu Han Jang to leave his, with his entourage, the Marquis's wife's the Marquis's wife's face turned cold. Oh, this kid has grown up. Knows how to use the Wang Yi to threaten sister now. The third wife laughed coldly and said, looking to win favor as she looked towards the person sitting in the mistress's seat. Wasn't able to find out much. Madame Du took a handkerchief and wiped her mouth and languidly stood up. Let's go. We must prepare for the banquet. Jing Xiao was standing in the Marquis's study room with both of his hands behind his back. He looked rather interested in the painting on the wall. The long picture scroll occupied half the wall. It had on it nine different bladed weapons, and on top was a line of words. To think of nine treasured weapons, three swords, the first to speak of the first to speak of is Ling Bao. The second to speak of is Han. The second to speak of is Han Zheng. The third to speak of is Su. Is Su Ji. Two daggers. Names are given according to their posture, so that it can be inscribed in one's memory. Is Wang Yi also a person who appreciates weapons? Mu Jin smiled as he asked. Treasured weapons recognize their master. If it is not one's own, then one can only appreciate it but not be able to slay the enemy. Jing Xiao turned around and said this with a smile that was yet not like a smile, and he, as he looked at the North Marquess. Wang Yi is truly a master. 
Wang Yi is truly a master. Mu Jin smiled, not continuing the subject with Jing Xiao. He changed the subject and said, Since he was young, Han Jing, Han Jiang didn't like weapons. He was also inarticulate with his speech. If he is improper, please, Wang Yi, do not bother with him. Jun Qing is very good, Jing Xiao lightly said that sentence. Then he turned back to look at the painting on the wall. That treasured Hanjang sword glinting with brilliant light and vibrant colors was like a colorful stone. The inner essence was obviously radiant. On it were the words, Han Jang and Su Qi, pure as ice and profoundly clear. Mu Jin, seeing him so calm and com composed, could not help but be anxious. When they entered the study room, where a fragrant stick of incense was burning, he discussed the essence of wo he discussed the, uh, the essence of weapons with him unhurriedly, but he had brought him there with a certain intention. It was rumored that the Cheng Wang is irritable and easy to anger, rather rarely patient. But today it seemed that this person's manner is calm and unruffled, his gaze steady and deep, his whole body brimming with an austere aura that told of someone who has killed and ha that told of someone who has killed and has had to make harsh decisions. Completely unlike a youth that can be weakly manipulated. Mu Hanjang let Ji Shi reward some space. How much farther do we have to go? Because I gotta go get my Yui. Oh shoot, what did I do? Uh, oh, there we are. Just a second, I want to see how much. Oh, we're ready then. Oh, cool. oh, thank goodness. Okay. Let's go, go, go. Mu Hanjang let Ji Shi reward some pieces of silver before dismissing the servant girls leading the way. Then he walked into Concubine Chu's little courtyard by himself. The Marquis's residence was not as big as the Prince's. It was a house where all people lived in a courtyard, and concubines could only be split into two room houses with a small courtyard. Oh, that feels cramped. It truly deserved to being called a small courtyard, since the open space in between was only a small gap between the next concubine's house. Chu Lan is the second young master in the rear courtyard? A familiar voice came from the room with a slight cough. Hmm. Yes, I heard that he is taking talking to Fu Ren. Chu Lan carried a pot of herbal tea and came out to change the water. It just happened that she bumped into Mu Hanjang, who was in front of the door, so she could not help but exclaim, Second young master! Mu Han Jang nodded and raised the curtain and walked in. The situation inside the room was not as bad as he had imagined. Concubine Chu leaned on the headboard and was embroidering. Hearing the cry of surprise of Chu Lan, she suddenly pricked her hand. Why are you still why are you still embroidering if you're ill? Mu Han Jang walked towards her quickly. Concubine Chu sucked at the blood on her fingertip. When she saw him, she laughed sentimentally. I just can't... I just can't be where there's wind. There's no harm to embroidering. I only hope... So, so, I only hope second young master has been living safe and sound in the prince's palace. As she said this, her tears couldn't help but fall. I am very good. Yinang doesn't need to worry. Wang Yi, he treats me very well. Mu Han Jang pursed his lips and said slowly. He took the handkerchief from the hands of Concubine Chu to wipe her eyes. He allocated a small imperial guard for me, allows me to go out, and hasn't ever taken out his anger on me. 
Really? Concubine Chu did not believe it. It was a very it was very well known that it was very well known that the temper of Chang Wang was not good. In fact, he, in fact, is not the same as everyone claims to know. Recalling the two days of them getting along, Mu Hanjang swallowed a smile on his face, showed a smile on his face. I'm really living well, mother. I'm really living well, mother. The author has something to say. It's a little late today. <sighs> we'll post it first. But uh, if in a little bit you see an even newer post, it's just me fixing wrong words. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to cut this short really quick because it's 9.58 and I want to be out of here by 10. All right. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed. The next episode will be airing this coming Tuesday and we will be continu continuing on with the next four chapters of Married Thrice to Salted Fish. And then uh, we will be back with The Wife First. The Wife is First on Wednesday. All right. Once again, thank you so, so much. And I hope you have a lovely evening. Thank you for joining me.